Hello fans, this is Shadow Fury 333 and we have another exhibition match stream tonight. Well, today. Depends on your time zone. For me, it's the middle of the afternoon. Now we're gonna start out well, actually, all this stream will probably be is Google Frog versus Acronym. As you can tell from my voice, I am a little bit under the weather right now, so I don't really wanna be going too long. But I will do still do some. If you're wondering. This is why there hasn't been any Wednesday or Friday stream this week, because I was just sick. I'm doing better now, but on Wednesday I was, like, I was home from work sick. It was, yeah. Anyway, okay, most of us home from work because I didn't want to infect anybody else, but still. I was in a weird haze where you just can't really do anything useful. But enough about me. On to the game. So this is on Trojan Hills, which, as any, who, any of you who watch this regularly know, is pretty much my favorite map, mostly because of the way it's arranged and you have all these choke points and everything. It just, it's cool looking. And also it just has, like I said, choke points. It's a neat tactical setup. You can go around in all these different directions. Although, I mean, I have heard complaints about the fact that it uses more stock textures, but it also uses some nice, like very nice layering, which it's always nice to see. Good natural looking layering. Although, like I said, apparently these are all like, default textures splatted on. Anyway, that aside, I still think it looks pretty good, and I think it plays really well. So we're going to have Google Frog and Aquanim going at it, the two people who practice all the time together. Whenever you see team games, typically they are in team tournaments together as a team. And actually, that's probably going to be next week. Next week at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 10 a.m. UTC, most likely, there will be a 2v2 tournament. That's typically when it is, last weekend, last Saturday of the month. Well, last Saturday of every even month is 2v2. And June is month 6, which is divisible by 2. So, that will be next week. But this week, we just have Acronym and Google Frog going at it. And next week, we'll probably see them working together. So, without further ado, let's get to the game. Acronym starting out with the Clickabout Factory. Pretty typical start. Well, Google Frog looks to be testing out the new jump jet changes. I mentioned these last week, but basically... Actually, there's even more changes now, with moderators becoming, I believe... A small change is like they become skirmishable by other skirmishers, and they're also... I wonder if they changed the cost again. No, it's still 240. Used to be 300, now 240. See how that works out. The Jump Bot Factory has been, for some time, kind of been the Pyro Factory. I mean, moderators are good too, and moderators haven't used a lot, but it's kind of like Pyro, Moderator. I mean, jump bots, they aren't unpopular, but they just have some weaknesses. For one thing, they don't really have a quick writer that doesn't kill itself in the process. So it can be kind of easy to expand around them. But at the same time, you're also having to deal with the fact that Pyros are extremely tough. So once they get to your place, they're jumping around and burning everything down. A bit tricky. Like, hard to deal with, but after Pyros and Moderators, I mean, it's just, it's hard to know what to do sometimes. And Orphelia's pointing out that, yeah, they were right, they were, one of these would be casted. Well, yeah, I prioritize matches that have been commented on because they're just easier to find. I can look in the forums in the recent threads post, or recent threads page, which is basically the homepage of the forums, and just see, oh, there's a battle, there's a two-person battle, well, let's see if that's any good. And if no one else has casted it so far, because I don't like stepping on other people's toes. And if both of those are true, then I go and cast it. So yeah, this is going to be casted because basically it was talked about. Anyway, Aquanim is expanding a little bit faster than Google Frog. Getting a nice early economic lead. Google Frog looks like they're focusing a bit... Are they focusing more on information? Let's see. They have radar. Aquanim has radar. Both players have radar. Both players are pretty well informed about their immediate surroundings. And Aquanim, for one thing, knows that Google Frog is about to come in to run into these glaives and Google Frog does not. Or more importantly, that tick. And nice! Nails it in the air. Well, okay, nails it as it's jumping, but still, that pyro is very dead. Good use of tick. I really enjoy seeing ticks used like that. Actually, it's something that I think it's one of those things that separates good players from bad players is knowing when and how, well, knowing when to use ticks and remembering to use ticks. Fortunately, those glaives died as a result of the pyro. But hey, they, they died after fighting. They did their job. Unfortunately, their job is not anywhere near complete, but fortunately that pyro got distracted by Metal Extractor here, and is that Lotus done? No, it's not done in time. The pyro is able to escape. So, free Metal Extractor. Good got, good shot there, Google Frog. That was, that was well done. That's exactly what you needed to do, and Google Frog 
getting a nice economic lead thanks to these Metalist Chargers back here, and so is Aquanum, but Aquanum is a little bit delayed. They were a bit more paranoid about the jump bots. I mean, I mentioned before that jump bots have slower raiders, but Pyros, yeah, they aren't the fastest raiders, but they are scary. Like, it's hard to be offensive when you have Pyros running around, and if you aren't careful, if you don't haven't defended everything, those Pyros will overrun. So sure, they're not the fastest raiders, but they are fairly flexible. But other than Pyros, you had moderators, but Firewalkers were the big things that were buffed, and Google Frog about to use them. That was a huge buff. Firewalkers... Who says Glaze beat Pyros? Oh, maybe people on... I haven't. I don't have labels showing right now, but maybe people are making labels saying Glaive beat Pyro. In large numbers, maybe, but I don't like to rely on that. Zeus beats Pyro one-on-one. -on -one, not for cost, but one-on-one. -on -one. Rocco's in large groups. Well, they kind of clean up everything. Warriors sort of work. But then again, you have the speed problem. Like, Cloakey doesn't really have an easy answer to lots of Pyros. They have answers, like ticks. Ticks are a good answer. They have answers, but they don't have a one easy kill them all answer. Oh, unfortunately, Akunum walked right through that entire set of... Oh, he's gonna stun his own glaze! Oh, not quite close to their own glaze. Thought about but to stun both glaze. That would have been very disastrous. Although, even then, this one's burned to death. Running through the Pyro's Death Flame is generally unwise. Akunum doesn't seem to be paying much attention to that, unfortunately. But yeah, ticks... That's actually a good one, but ticks you have to... It's hard to do offensively. Unless you have an eraser and tick combo, it becomes really difficult to use that. And both players roughly at the plus 25 range, which means we should be using, seeing either Fracture Switch or just the higher, well, more expensive units. So Zeus should be coming out fairly soon, I would think. Nope, still Glaives and Ticks. Aquanim's very much focused on getting the Glaive-Tick combo going. Well, Google Frog is switching over to Firewalker a little bit, which is going to really punish that Glaive-Tick combo. The only upside being the Glaives and Ticks can kind of move out of the way quickly enough, but still Firewalkers, especially with all the shots they have. The big thing, though, is that Firewalker is going to be attacking this front defense. That's what it's going to be used for. I mean, it can help with this, but who cares about that? Pyros can deal with that. Stinger, on the other hand, that's what the Firewalker's for. And that should be able to tear this whole thing apart without any issue. The Glaives will not be able to get in. Too many defenders have been set up to allow the Glaives to get in, and Aquanim seems to be aware of this. I'm actually going to turn that off now because that's a bit annoying. Okay, Aquanim seems aware of this and is not approaching. Now, I'm a bit surprised they are sticking... Okay, Sharpshooter is a good choice. I'm just surprised they're still sticking to Glaive Tick and haven't switched over to either... I mean, Zeus would be a little slow, so I can kind of see that. But I'm also a little bit surprised that they haven't switched over to like, maybe throwing in a few Rockos here and there, or Warrior or something. I mean, Warrior against this is a bad idea. That, that wouldn't make sense. Zeus would probably be the most sensible thing to do, because there are no moderators up. There are a lot of Pyros. There are a lot of static defense that would just... The Zeus would just tank all that. Sharpshooter is also a good option, though. It's going to be a bit tricky. Against Firewalker, that's actually a tricky thing to do because of the spread. As long as the Firewalker, as long as Google Frog's paying some attention to the projectile, if they have any idea where that sharpshooter is coming from, they can just fire anywhere in the general direction and it will both reveal and probably kill the sharpshooter. I mean, at this point, the entire front area is, well, it's not really capturable at this point. And these blades cannot move in, and Aquanim really has no easy way of getting through this area. One thing they do have is that this area here is the only area that Google Frog's really fortified. Everything along the back, there are a few lotuses here and there, but any decently sized force will get rid of them. But this front area, that's the really well defended area. And Google Frog, they are calling air, and they have called it actually incorrectly. They're the ones who are going for gunships. They're assuming Aquanim's going to go for gunships or planes as well, but Aquanim is in fact not doing that. So Google Frog is preparing for a force that is not coming in. At least not yet. 280 medals so far is a slight disadvantage for Google Frog. Whereas, I mean, at this point, Aquanim is slightly ahead in military. Now, that 250 metal, or 280 metal, probably would be better spent on a couple pyros. One of them has just died. That's 220 each. That would have been an extra pyro here, though I don't know that that would make a difference yet. It's very hard to call this right now. It's going to come down to tick usage, and one of the ticks does stun a pyro, which is exactly what it needs to do. The other pyro is... Why is it, is it running away? It's regrouping. So, we have right now eight pyros, seven pyros coming in. 
And no further ticks, so the Glaives are basically dead. But the regrouped Pyros will be able to assault this base very strongly, and one Lotus will not call it. What? That won't cut it at all. Several, a Stardust or two? That would be what you'd need. Not one Lotus. A field of Lotuses, maybe? Or a pond of Lotuses is supposed to be more accurate, but yeah, that's... Which is actually kind of funny, because Lotuses cannot be placed... Oh no, they can't be placed in water. I was about to say, that'd be funny if they couldn't. But no, they can. That's totally appropriate. The name is not ironic. Anyway, Google Frog, still slightly behind economically, but they have been doing really well in terms of attrition. I mean, the fact that Pyros are just... they're quite strong against Glaives. But then, they're not so strong against Ticks, and this Tick's gonna go off, should take out two of them at most. Just one, wow, yeah, well, like I said, it wasn't the best positioning. Still, ah, that's a good, oh, almost a good Tick. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty good Tick, it actually stunned out all but one, so that's all it needed to do. It just, unfortunately, stunned out all the rest of the Glaives. But, Aquanim has such a feel, 2,000 reclaim, no, 1,000, never mind, 40%, 40%, but yeah, 1,000 metal worth of reclaim in this area alone. Getting a Caretaker up, because that's what Aquanim does, Aquanim always builds Caretakers for reclaim, they never really like to have reclaim claimed by workers, I'm not sure why, they just never do, I should point out that Aquanim has actually been accessing this entire time, not been assessing the factory, no additional factories, They've been building up places here and there, and they've been doing quite well, despite the fact that they haven't really been turning the economy into production. But if they did so, like, if they turned their economy into a production advantage, they could probably take this game. Like, these ticks have been working extremely well. It's basically been what's giving them, what's keeping them in the game right now is their solid tick usage. I mean, okay, they stand to some of their own glaze, but for the most part, their ticks have been doing their job. I mean, the thing is, ticks... 120 metal each? If it kills one pyro, it's made double cost. I mean, granted, it's probably a couple glaze will die too, but yeah, if one pyro dies, that tick is more than made cost. So it's totally worth it, even for one pyro, just in terms of cost. In terms of the fact that you're not going to be building an entire army of ticks, you want to try to stun two or three, but still. Aquanim's doing a pretty good job keeping Google Frog's pyro numbers down. At this point, Google Frog ba just now back up to nine. Excuse me. That's after about like a minute and a half or so of construction. But this assault over to the southeast has no real... There's nothing stopping it. There's no real opposition whatsoever. These Banshees being the major thorn on the side. No Razors, no Defenders. Akram did not call air. They did build Gremlins, but they didn't build any Razors, which... I mean, they haven't sent any workers down here ever since they built these Wind Generators, and that was some time ago. But now, it looks like okay, Caretakers are up. Factory's up. Heavy Tank Switch. Interesting. Going for the Reapers. Which... That makes sense. Looks like they're going to assault this area right here. Just knock it down with Reapers. And there isn't much that the Pyro Factory can do. Or sorry, <laughs> the Jump Bot Factory. See what I mean? See what I mean? The Pyro Factory. It's just you, you think of it, you think of Pyros. Because that's the, such a flexible unit. The rest of the units are, is a specialist factory. That's part of the name. And granted, you do see moderators. Like, moderators and... Like, if you get a normal progression where it's you, your opponent goes to riots, moderators will come up, or they go to Zeus, moderators will come up. And that's why Akron is not making Zeus. I mean, it's typically what you see, but then you typically see a moderator counter. So Akronim is clearly trying to avoid provoking Google Frog to get into Zeus, and Ophelia is pointing out, I should point out, moderators did get a huge buff at our slow. Well, moderators got a buff, that's the thing. They got their cost reduced, and they got a bunch of other buffs too. And we see Scuttle's... Scuttle drop! Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. We've got to follow this. Well, eventually when it's done. Where'd it go? Okay, so... Did just miss a couple pyros writing down in the south. I shouldn't say a couple, I should say a dozen, because that's what the accurate statement is. And now the ticks being countered by the banshees, unfortunately nothing really able to deal with them. Still no razors down here or anything, so unfortunately these banshees are going to be entirely taken down by the glaze, which isn't... Okay, glaze and lotus. The lotus is basically the main firepower here. The glaze are not able to fire often enough. This is not going well for Akronim. However, the center is getting taken down, but at this point Google Frog has captured most of the rest of the north side of the map, so that center is not going to be the biggest deal. The South, however, is. That's Akuna's main economy, main power of generation. They're losing at least about well, 6 metal per second and about 20 power per second, just or 20 energy per second, just right there. Banisher to help deal with this. And no moderators coming in here. Scuttles instead. And that Scuttle Drop. Where's that Scuttle Drop? Oh, come on. Okay, Blastwing's coming in, which... Lots of suicide units coming in here, but where's that Scuttle Drop? That Scuttle Drop is... 
Ah, that's gonna be the big thing. I'm guessing it's coming into the commander, but ah, here it is. There is our scuttle drop. And we see that there is an attack going over in Google Frog's base as well. The Reaper's coming in there. But the scuttle drop going into the Heavy Tank Factory and blowing that up, so Heavy Tank Factory's out. However, the Reaper's already in Aquinum's base. And just destroying everything they have. One freak at a time, but yeah, they don't want to destroy the. Ooh, missed with the scuttle! That is painful. You see, those things, 8,000 damage. And it missed, but unfortunately the second scuttle is going to hit, and Aquinum loses that Reaper, thanks to that scuttle. Yeah, 8,000 damage, that's why that scuttle drop is a big deal, which is done, but yeah, look at that. That's one hell of a crater. So at this point, no tanks for Aquinum. Aquinum instead going for gunships. Unfortunately for Aquinum, Goofrog still has this Raider over here, and actually does have a couple Razors because they were... Oh wait, no. No, in fact, that is... That is Aquinum's Razor. Aquinum did prep for a Razor. I missed that. So at this point, Goofrog just focusing heavily on Scuttles and Scuttle Dropping. Interesting choice. I mean, the thing is that Aquinum doesn't have much in the way of anti-air, nor do they have much in the way of air. So Goofrog doesn't need to be switching over. Unfortunately, Aquinum's also not got much in the way of economy, so right now... This is essentially a last-ditch desperate attempt. They have a lot of reclaim, though, but not a lot of power to use it with. But also, like I said, I mean, they are using a few workers here and there, which is good. I like to see that. But like I said, Akinem has a tendency to want to use caretakers for reclaim. Or at least for enemy reclaim. They are using some workers, which is for some conjurers for the reclaim, which is good. I'm glad to see that. And they're getting closer and closer to economic parity, and Cloakybot coming in as well for Google Frog. Interesting why they went for Cloakybot. I guess they want to just go for the last little assault with the Warriors and Rockos. Probably mostly Rockos, actually. I mean, they could use Moderators for this, but that's going to be really tough. And the Pyros, they're probably going to get destroyed trying to... I, mean, I guess to Stinger and no, the Pyros will win. But I'm going to guess the Cloakybot Factory is going to be used for Rockos, just as, an, as a secondary skirmish assault force. It might be used for Warriors, though, as a crowd control, but I kind of doubt it. So the Pyros are doing a fine job of that. The Ticks have been the only problem there, and I don't actually see any Ticks on the map right now. No, it looks like Tick production has largely ceased. And Akinem switching over to... Akinem? Wait, they... Oh, I missed that! Akinem actually just lost their Kalikabot factory, too! Another Scuttle Drop. Rapier's coming in here. This is pretty much the only thing that Akinem has and whatever glaives they had left. They gotta be careful with that. Thankfully though, the center has been opened up, so they do have a few options. And over here as well, unfortunately, oh, running that Banisher right into the Lotus, is that the last place they want to shoot the Banisher, doing nothing with its final missile. Just hitting a harmless piece of ground. And Banisher drops because why not? One good drop deserves another, I suppose. And we see hammers are in fact the order of the day, not of course. Why wouldn't you go to hammers? I mean, it's another good way of getting defenses. I just figure all oh, the glaze coming in. I mean, I guess there's defenses they can hide behind, but still, that's not what I would expect, but a good choice nonetheless. So at this point, Google Frog is very much ahead. They have twice the economy. They have particularly in energy. That's the biggest thing. Akinem can't really reclaim their way back to the game. They need to build more and more power plants in order to do so. These wind generators are doing a good job on their own, but they need more of them. They just aren't building many. They're, they have the commander building a few, but 39 energy is not enough. Not for the reclaim they could have. And that one Zeus, unfortunately, Zeus against Pyro. The Glazer work okay here. The Banisher should be interesting, but still not a whole lot of health, so it's really tough for to do much damage. It'll get two shots off, then it'll die. Three shots off. Oh, it got lucky. It got three. Wait, is he going to get a fourth? Nope, not going to get a fourth, just three. One more than I expected, but yeah, another scuttle drop down with the gunship plant. These scuttle drops have been devastating to Aquanum. We have lost production facility after production facility. Every single time they seem like they're going to get somewhere, they just lose their production. And Google Frog has all the options in the world. Aquanum back to Cloakybot Factory, getting some Zeus, which will be handy here, but no ticks to deal with the Pyros. This would be a great time to use ticks, too, but no, unfortunately, the ticks are not here. Zeus coming in, but the Zeus are going to be overwhelmed. Like I said, they're good at one-on-one -on -one against Pyros, but not for cost. They're only for cost if the Pyros kind of go in one at a time. But yeah, that biggest thing there was the scuttle drops. 
Those skull drops have disrupted Aquanum. Actually, the skull drops and this back raid. Aquanum losing all that power, because they could have pretty easily recovered from the skull drops if it weren't for losing the power. Also, they didn't go for a lot of anti air. That didn't help either. The gremlins are okay, but they didn't have a lot of static placed anti air in their main base to block off drops. But yeah, this area here was a big deal just because losing all that energy means they can't reclaim their way back to victory. And that's huge. If you can't reclaim, you can't catch up. At least not easily. Like you have to win a lot of battles decisively in order to catch up. Yeah, that was that was that. Pretty good match. So I'll have another one for you guys between Google Frog and Akinem. It looks like it was three in a row. So we'll see between who if it's best of three or if it was first to three. But next match is going to be I want to say Baron, but I think that's wrong. What the? Wait. Oh, it's a rematch on Trojan Hills. Okay, interesting. All right, so we're back to Trojan Hills. Next one. Stay tuned for that. No real change, I guess, to everything. It's Trojan Hills again. Oh, actually, I should write that down. Those of you watching on YouTube have no idea what I'm talking about because you're not watching the stream. But the stream title has been updated. Anyway, be back in just a moment, so stay tuned.